Good morning and welcome to your thoughts for the week once again. Names are very important things. Um, some of us have had no choice in the name that we've been given. Others of us as parents have had the privilege and responsibility of choosing the names for our kids. But there's one name that was in the news headlines last Friday and I, I think perhaps Mr. and Mrs. McCann regret the choice of name. Perhaps you saw it, Phil McCann. Poor guy was pictured there on Friday morning in the forecourt of a petrol station in Stockport, I think, reporting about being unable to fill his can of fuel. And he was made fun of and he was mocked on Twitter and Instagram and all these things. And I really felt sorry for the guy. He said it was like being back in year nine at school. So names can be good, names can be difficult, but names are also important when we come to the Bible. Adam was called Adam because he was the father of the human race. Abraham was called Abraham because he was the father of many. So names are important, but there's one name I want us to think about for a few minutes this morning. It's almost a title, and it's the name Christian. And that word, being a Christian, conjures up many, many images in people's minds today. For those outside the Christian church, for those who have not had any opportunities to understand more about Christianity, a Christian can be seen as a very negative thing. And that's unfortunate. But what's interesting about this word Christian or this name Christian is that it wasn't something that the Christians chose for themselves. Those who follow Jesus were described as saints or believers. Jesus didn't even use this name for themselves. He didn't use this name to describe those who followed him. It was others who gave this name to the followers of Jesus. In Acts chapter 11, we, we follow the churches as, as it has been breaking out of Jerusalem after persecution, moving into the surrounding areas, which are very different culturally. And the gospel came to the city of Antioch. And in chapter 11 of Acts, verse 25 and 26, we read these words. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. And then we read this phrase. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. It wasn't a name they chose for themselves. It was a name given to them by the society in Antioch. But why a new name? It's helpful for us to understand a little bit of the culture as always and the context. Antioch was also referred to as the world in one city. It was a large cosmopolitan city with diverse cultures and languages, diverse people, and it was often divided up into little subgroups. Not quite ghettos, but little residential areas where people of a like mind would stay together. And it was a city known for its division and diversity. And into that context, the good news of Jesus came as those who followed Jesus came to settle there and live out their lives. And the church of Christ in Antioch began to break down these barriers. There was no Jew or Greek, there was no male or female, there was no rich or poor. Everybody was one in Christ, as we read later on in the letter to Galatians. So from all parts of the city, as people looked on, they found that those who were followers of Jesus were different. They weren't like the other religious groups that kept themselves to themselves. And so the need for a new name. And they called them Christians, or literally, literally little Christs. As those in that city of Antioch looked on at those who followed Jesus, they were no doubt who they were following. They were little Christs. They were those who were followers of Jesus. And it's the same as we go on through the New Testament. It's, the word appears in two other contexts. In Acts 26, in the words of King Agrippa, an unbelieving king who described the followers of Jesus as little Christs. And then in 1 Peter, in a context where the Christians were living out their lives in a hostile city, those in the society there referred to them as little Christs. And the focus on this is that it was those outside the faith who recognized in those who claimed to be followers of Jesus a distinctiveness, a difference, 
a loving attitude and acceptance. They were not decisive, they were not diversive, they were not separatist, they were not sectarian. And I've been thinking about that for a while over this past few weeks. And two questions came to my mind. That's a very simple one, first of all. What do those outside the Christian faith say about us? What name would they use for us? Would they see in us the same qualities that Jesus displayed? Do they see in us a distinctiveness, an attractiveness, a gentleness, a graciousness? Do they see in us making a difference in the society in which we live, breaking down barriers, building peace and reconciliation? Or are we just seen as another religious group that's harsh and hard and cold and distant? So what do outsiders say about us? And then what do we see in those around us who profess faith in Christ? As those around us that we mix with day in, day out, as we mix with on our Sunday mornings in church, those who also are little Christ. How do we react to those around us? They're very different and it's not always easy. But do we value them as little Christs? Do we see them as those who have been loved, accepted, redeemed, forgiven, being made new but not quite the full article yet? People in who God has began a good work and will bring it to fruition. But in the meantime, there's still a, rough, a few rough edges, a few rough bumps that need to be knocked off, just as there are in each of us. Are we able to forgive them as we have been forgiven? Are we able to show mercy as we have been shown mercy? Are we able to love them unconditionally as we have been loved unconditionally? Or do old hurts, family feuds, things from the past make us separatists in our attitude to those around our own fellowship? It's a real challenge. It's an incredible challenge. And it's not at all easy. And it's really impossible if we do it by ourselves. Here's another picture for you. It's a picture of a banner at a church I was visiting last weekend. And you'll see there, there's another name, the name of Jesus. And surrounding the name of Jesus in the middle are all these other titles and names for Jesus. I'm not going to read them all, but look at a few of them. King of Kings, First and Last, Deliverer, Cornerstone, Prince of Peace. You see, if we try to live as Christians without Christ, we will never be able to do it. We can only do it as we come to Christ and allow him to transform us by his word and fill us by his spirit so that we don't do this in our own strength, but we do it as Christ lives through us. And you'll see it there at the bottom of that little banner. It says, Jesus was called Jesus because he came to save people from their sins. It's only as we bring our problems and our challenges and our hurts and our disappointments to Jesus and allow him to mold us and change us and fill us with grace that we can live up to the title or the name of being a Christian. Poor old Phil McCann will forever be linked with that report. As people look at us, what do they see? Do they use the name Christian in a way that's honourable, that, that recognises in us those qualities of Jesus? As we look at those around us who profess to be Christians like we do, do we see them as little Christs? It's a challenge, it really is. And and this week, perhaps, I can encourage you just to pause for a minute and think about that name and just prayerfully come and ask God to help you where you're struggling. Ask God to fill you with the fruit of his spirit so that you are able through Christ to show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control so that we, where we, are, we have been placed, are living in a way in which those around us who don't know anything about Jesus see a distinctiveness and attractiveness that warms them to the message of Jesus. And we become a blessing to those around us within our fellowships, but also without.